Joining me now, live with reaction, he's in his bunker, the great one, Mark Levin. Mark, first question. We have a Nobel Prize winning president, the anointed one, I call him. Uh, were you as surprised as I was today that Barack Obama the uh, first was not elected the Pope? Well, you know, they actually have something in common, uh, Sean, and yeah. that is the Pope is a Pope who, who cares about the poor, and Obama's a president who creates more poor. So they have something in common in that regard. Well, that's a pretty good point. Um, what about, you know, the president, it, it was one week ago, Mark, you were talking about it on your radio show. I've been talking about it here and on my radio show. Uh, the apocalyptic doom and gloom over sequestration, Republicans hate, no immunization for kids, on and on and on. And you hear what we just played for the president. Now a charm right. offensive. Why would anybody believe that? Well, they wouldn't. It's my understanding in order to uh, be a guest, you need to have one of these, Sean. This is, this is a whiteboard, you know? Yeah. And uh, I, I thought I'd put something together for liberals here, just, just so the liberals can, that's just for the liberals. This is just for Obama liberal viewers. Equals, okay. I'm watching. Yes. It's, it's Obama equals bankruptcy, and bankruptcy means starving kids, no vaccines, starving seniors, no student loans, no Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, no free contraceptives. Now, that one will really tick you off. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Massive tax <laughs> increases, me? crushing Why are you debt. Me? Go ahead. Not you, but the oh. libs out there. And a thousand years of uh, darkness. So, yes, so all these things can happen that Obama talks about if Obama gets his way. Well, all right, let me, let me give you the latest pile on. Uh, and the president, we just, the last clip we just showed, this is the president, he was talking to George Stephanopoulos, we played it last night, and again he's back to saying, you know, we're going to have to cut kids, cut kids. That's not what Paul Ryan's budget does. But listen to Democrats and the rhetoric, the propaganda, the misinformation, and right. frankly the lies that they continue to tell. Let's roll this tape. You look at his principles, you look at his vision, and they're a nightmare for America. He wants Americans to work until they die. He wants poor people who get sick not to be able to see a doctor, not to get the care they need, not to be able to get better. He wants them to die. This is the alternative to balance. It, it, it results in uh, unfair tax hikes on middle class Americans, and it results in undue burden on middle class Americans through the cuts in vision. This Republican budget, once again, takes an ideological, uncompromising approach to addressing that budget challenge. Perhaps the best thing I can tell you about the Republican budget is that, uh, here we go again. Yesterday, Americans got their first look at this year's Ryan Republican budget. Turns out it looks like last year's Ryan Republican budget. And it wasn't the only one. I was the only one that said, gee whiz, not again. Uh, their fearless leader, Dem their, their fearless leader, Mark, demagogue, so they demagogue. Why are you laughing? I'm laughing because these are what I'll call the Jim Jones Democrats. These, these people are unbelievable with, the, with what they're talking about. Let me, let me throw a few facts on the table. The Government Accountability Office, you know, the one that works for Harry Reid and Obama, they said there's $125 billion in estimated improper payments in the federal government. I've got another one of their reports. $510 billion of duplicative, wasteful programs in the federal government. That's a lot of money. I've got another document here, a summary of the Social Security Medicare Boards of Trustees. I think they work for Obama, and they say here Medicare and Social Security cannot sustain protected long-term program costs, and that somebody needs to do something about it very fast. What has Obama done about any of this? Nothing about the $500 billion, nothing about the $125 billion, nothing about Social Security, Medicare, or Medicaid. And then they go around talking about how they care about people. They don't care about anybody. They represent big government, and that's all they represent. And Mark, the results aren't good. I mean, let's be honest here. We have 9 million people, fewer, million, fewer Americans in the workforce, 50 million Americans. These are real people. That, have to, that now find themselves on food stamps because there's no opportunity in the country. One in six Americans in poverty. The Republican budget is proposed by Ryan. And you may have disagreements, and feel free to tell me if you do or you don't, I don't care. But 3.4% increase in spending every year for 10 years isn't a cut. I don't care even if you're using a Washington, D.C. calculator. No. That's not a cut. I have a question for you, Harry Reid. I have a question for you, President Obama. Our entitlements, unfunded liabilities are over 90 
$6 trillion. Now, what are you going to do about it? Where's your proposal? Our fiscal operating deficit is over $16.5 trillion. Now, what are you going to do about it? You're not going to do anything about it. You just said, Mr. President, that we don't have a, uh, a deficit crisis. And if we don't have a deficit or debt crisis, why do you keep wanting to raise taxes, too, while we're at it? Now, let me tell you something, Sean. This man and this party is ideologically driven. They're like the Pied Piper trying to take the country over the cliff. And we have to stop it. And that's what we're trying to do. And when the economic system collapses, all they're talking about, food, housing, uh, schooling, kids, uh, senior citizens, everybody's going to suffer miserably. And that's what we're trying to prevent. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, anybody with eyes to see can see where we're headed. And if you want a, a, a vision, if the Democrats have their way, just go look at Greece and Spain and Portugal and Europe and you'll see what happens. The thing is, we, they just got their tax increase. As a matter of fact, Mark, as you know, they got two tax increases at the start of this year. They got the new Obamacare tax, then they got the fiscal cliff tax. Three months later, they're back now, the Democratic budget in the Senate, which, by the way, they hadn't produced in four years. Now they want another trillion dollars to take out of the economy. Uh, it's how do the Republicans deal with this? We, we, I had John Boehner on my radio show, Paul Ryan on this show last night. What are your thoughts? What are they doing right? What are they doing wrong? Well, actually doing something would help. Proposing budgets and doing all that's all well and good. They had a continuing resolution last week that they could have used to try and cut some of Obamacare administrative expenses, put some language in it in order to cur uh, curtail Obamacare. Obamacare is the big killer in this society, and not just of health care, but of liberty and the Constitution. And what do they do? They vote for it. Not only do they vote for it, they don't even allow conservatives in the House to put an amendment on it. Obama's not taking Boehner seriously. He's kicking him around like a soccer ball. That's the problem. The Republicans have got to show that they mean something. And if they don't, this is going to continue. And uh, as far as Obama goes, Mr. President, you said you would not raise taxes on the middle class. You increased those payroll taxes. Why do you keep lying to the American people? You said you wouldn't raise taxes on the middle class. We've got all kinds of taxes on medical devices, on insurance plans that are passed on to the people. We've got all kinds of taxes. And not only that, businesses are going to reduce employment 40 hours a week, 30 hours a week to 29 hours a week. You've done this. You've done this to the middle class. Why do you keep lying about it? You know, Mark, you and I had him pegged from day one. I know there are some Johnny-come-latelys now that have jumped on the scene and actually after five years have figured it out. But uh, uh, i got to tell you something. There's been more damage being done right before our eyes. It's got to be stopped. Welcome back to Hannity as we continue from the bunker tonight, the great one, Mark Levin. You know, Mark, if, if this is how Democrats want to play, all right, we're big boys, we can take it, politics is a blood sport. But if that's the case, then every Democrat that has signed on to Obama's reckless $6 trillion in debt and his spending that hasn't created a single job, he didn't cut the deficit in half, I think it's just time to it just describe them for what they are. They are thieves breaking open our children's piggy bank and robbing future generations blind. I don't hear Republicans taking off offensive positions like that. Time for them to get more aggressive? Yeah, it would be nice if they got a little more aggressive. And all they have to do is speak the truth and speak it in complete sentences. But for some reason, <laughs> uh, it yeah. doesn't seem to work there among the Republicans. Here, let me try it this way. Let's take Medicare. Right? They're, doing, they're, they're going to talk about Paul Ryan throwing old women off the cliff again, right? Well, who is it that has destroyed Medicare Advantage? Do you know you senior citizens out there? Obama. You're not going to have Medicare Advantage anymore. That's right. Obama did that. Who is it that took $716 billion out of Medicare to subsidize health care for people who don't pay for their own health care? That's Obama. Where is Obama's proposal on reforming Medicare when his own Medicare trustees tell him this is unsustainable, it's collapsing? There is no proposal. And while I'm at it, Sean, Mr. President, you said if we wanted to keep our insurance policies, we could. 
You lied. You said if our insurance premiums that they wouldn't increase. They are. You lied. You said Obamacare would reduce the deficit. It's skyrocketing the deficit. You lied. When are you going to tell the American people the truth? He's not, That's Mark. my question. Mark, but here's the point. I mean, you mentioned, I think you used the term Jim Jones Democrats out there, which, you know, is typical Levin humor, but there's truth to it. Is, you know, we have these Johnny come lately zombies that were sucked into hope and change, and yes, we can, and they're chanting in repeatedly. He promised Obamacare was $900 billion over 10 years. Latest estimate is three times that amount. And over the long term, $6.2 trillion added to the debt. We, can, we cannot afford this and survive. But they're not, the, the president just keeps on demagoguing. They keep scaring old people. They keep playing the, the same old notes and the same talking well, points and thing. bumper stickers. It seems to work. Well, you know, uh, the Democrat Party may have a suicide pact for this country, but I choose not to participate, and there's tens of millions of us who choose not to participate, and that's what's so frustrating. We have a president who's driven by ideology and who's incompetent, who's apparently economically illiterate. But whatever the reason is, the idea that there's not even a single United States senator who's a Democrat or a single United States House member who's a Democrat who stands up to this absolute lunacy that's going on with this spending tells you an awful lot about the Democrat there's Party. No, this is not no the Democrat moderate, Party of 30 no years ago. There's no Democrat. So here's my, this is an important question because you're a strategist, you believe in tactics. What, if you're advising the Republicans, if John Boehner was sitting in a room alone with you and Mitch McConnell, what would you tell them, how would you tell them to navigate through this? You really want to know the truth? You I sure want the, about this? Of course this? I want the truth, yes. It's important I for the country. Be sitting, I wouldn't be sitting in a room with John Boehner. I'd be sitting in a room with conservatives trying to figure out how to replace John Boehner. Hate to tell you, that's my view. John Boehner, you know, sir, we can close the government down for three or five or ten days. They did it in the 1990s with Newt Gingrich and Clinton for three weeks. We don't even remember what occurred. Uh, this country's bigger than the government. Our lives are bigger than the government. We'll be able to eat. We'll be able to clothe ourselves. We'll be able to go to the movies. If the EPA isn't down our throats and in our face, we'll still live our lives Wait perfectly I fine. The Republicans need to accept this. I had Boehner on the radio show. You were listening today. And I asked him, I said, all right, let's assume you'll pass the bill that, that eliminates Obamacare and gets rid of it. I'm all in favor of that. But it's, we know the Senate's not going to pass it and the president's not going to sign it. So it's push is going to come to sh shove here, Mark. It's either the continual resolution or the debt ceiling, but at some point, if it, it, it's either symbolic or they have to be willing to shut down the government. His answer to me was that the full faith and credit of the United States would, would be in jeopardy. And my answer to him was, wait a minute, we take in $2.7 billion. Our obligations could be paid for seniors and the military and, and our debt service. Who's right? Well, you're right, because Boehner's repeating what Obama says. The bottom line is this. The debt is the interest on the debt that is due. We no. bring in far more money than is required to pay the interest that, on the debt to cover Social Security and Medicare, to cover the military and the vets. All right. And what he's talking about and Boehner's doing is paying for all the rest of the stuff. All right, uh, hey, by the way, you look good, great one. Uh, you lost some weight and you're, you're working out. You look like you're uh, ready to go in the UFC boxing, which you love so much. Oh, I love the UFC. God bless you. Thank you, buddy. You're looking pretty yeah. good yourself in a manly kind of way. Gee, thanks, Mark. Uh, <laughs> the great one, Mark Levin.